So when I first met Rocky, I have to confess, I did not know him as Rocky Cantrell. I actually knew him as Arkansas Corrections number 660488. Again, that was number 660488. Now, if you're like me, you should never have to refer someone as a number. That's what I believe. You should never have to refer to someone as a number. Because numbers aren't made in the image of God. You know who is? People. People are made in the image of God. Look to your left. Seriously, look to your left. Look to your right. Look to your left again. Look to your right again. The person right next to you has this intrinsic value that other things don't have. And they do not deserve a number. And yet somehow we want to put numbers to them and we hope they get out of prison and they do well and this, that, and the other. And that's not what we do at the Exodus Project. So at the Exodus Project, when they come to our, to, to our classes, we actually give them a name tag. So Rocky's name tag when he first came to the Exodus Project said Rocky Cantrell with no number. Because if you try to put people in a graph, I'm going to run away from you. I'm going to run away from you because if you tell me that we can chart people, their progress, I'm not sure we can do that. Because one plus one is two, one people, one person plus one person is not two people. All right, that's just the way it works. Uh, so I met Rocky Cantrell. I actually saw his paper come through my desk. Some of my coworkers went to go um, interview him. And in front of me was his application requesting to come to the Exodus Academy. So the vision behind the Academy is we want to take people who are currently incarcerated we want to give them two things. One, a whole new mindset to look at the world differently. And two, we want to strengthen their inner being to deal with the realities of the world. And uh, so in the application, I saw that Rocky had the inner desire to change, to be better, to do right. So I said yes to Rocky. I wrote him a letter. I sent it off to uh, the, uh, the unit. And here comes Rocky two weeks later into class. Right, so he gets his name tag, he puts it on, and I thought that was it. I thought Rocky was one of those dudes that just wanted to come in, get out of the get out of the unit, come to the class because there was females in the class and eat the free food that we had to offer. Well, I was extremely surprised because Rocky took me by the wayside. I was very surprised to know that he actually did want to change and did actually want to become a better person and contribute to society. Because again, people aren't numbers. And, and if you don't hear anything from me, from Rocky, from Chapman, from anybody, people are not numbers. They're individuals made in the image of God to be developed. And if you try to graph numbers, if you try to put it in an Excel spreadsheet, I'm going to run away from you. Because that, that does not add up. People are not numbers. They're individuals made in the image of God to be developed. So every Friday at the Academy, we have something we call Celebration Friday, where, where we celebrate the Lord's goodness, what He's doing in and through these inmates, uh, that they're not going to be referred to as inmates anymore. In a few months, they're going to be referred to as members of society. People that go to Walmart with you, people that when you pull up to the stoplight, you, do, you, you look left, they're right there. We want them to become productive members of society. Because people are, are not numbers. They're individuals made in the image of God to be developed. So every Friday we have uh, what we call this big celebration. And we encourage, and then we encourage individuals to get up, to sing, to sing poems, to be creative, and express what God is doing in their lives. So the very first Friday, I kind of say, hey guys, who wants to go first this time? And Rocky just gets out of his chair and says, hey, I want to go first. I'm like, oh my goodness. What's he going to say? I mean, this guy just looks awful, you know, whatever. And, uh, well, what came out of his words next actually put me to tears. I saw an individual who was expressing what he was going through and giving it to God. And I said, Rocky, you need to sing that again, brother. And he sung it again. And as I looked around, the other students who were incarcerated with him, both male and female, started crying as well. And what I picked up there was Rocky was expressing something that they were all feeling inside, 
something that they want to proclaim with their mouths, but they couldn't. And that's the creative thing about music. It gives us words that we don't have. That's the cool thing about you guys get to do every single morning. You kind of get up, get dressed, brush your teeth, and head to chapel and sing songs to the Lord that he's waking you up and he's giving you energy to come forward. And yes, I think Baker's right. I think there's some cool energy in this room. It gets really cool in those rooms because those individuals truly do want to change. Um, so he did sing that song, and I was amazed. And I said, I need to have this guy sing it wherever I can. <laughs> so when Baker came up to the academy, I said, Baker, you need to hear this guy sing. So he heard him sing. He said, he needs to come and perform at Harding University. I said, deal, let's do it. I'm there. So please welcome to Harding University, Rocky Cantrell. How are you guys? Awesome. Um, like you said, I just, I'm a returning citizen from prison. Um, it was my first time in prison, but uh, I've been incarcerated in jails, in and out of jails and institutions several times in my life. Uh, this last time in uh, 2013, you know, I made a, my whole life I didn't know how to believe in God or search for God or, or have any kind of aspect of that, right? But in 2013, uh, I found him, you know, uh, I chose to get baptized and return, uh, turn my life over to him. And shortly after that, all these things started happening in my life. Um, I had a best friend OD and die from drugs. I'm in the middle, of, in the process of trying to get sober, but all these negative things, all these things are just starting to hit me all at once. And then, you know, come a few months later, my brother dies, my older brother, um, of a rare blood disease called SDS. Um, shortly after that, my little brother, uh, which is my best friend on this planet, his name was Daniel. He, uh, he hung himself. So I find myself in this situation, you know, I, I'm struggling with my beliefs, you know, trying to turn myself over to God. And God, I don't understand what's going on. You know, I don't understand how to do all this. I don't, you know, I made this decision to, to, to make you my, my king, you know, my, 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 uh, my everything. And uh, all of a sudden, Satan's attacking me from everywhere I'm coming at, right? So I go to jail. And first off, I'm going I'm to sing two songs today, if that's all right. Uh, one of them's called My Rocky Road to Christ. Um, of course, my name's Rocky, but uh, it has been a rocky road the whole time. And um, so, you know, going through these struggles, I go to jail. I I'm incarcerated after my brother's funeral. And uh, I'm sitting there mad at the world, ticked off, thinking, God, why does this keep happening to me? You know, I had no hope, no, nothing at all. I mean, I just didn't even care to survive anymore. Well, I'm sitting there and I'm sharing with this guy named Jamal Simpson this story of my brother's death and, and all this. And he said, man, your life is a song. Let's, let's see what we can do about that. So we turned it into this song called My Rocky Road to Christ. But before I share the song with you, I want to share with you guys what God shared with me through those deaths, those experiences. He taught me uh, a purpose in life. Okay, The first death, he said, uh, you love this guy named Matt so much. He was your best friend. You cared for him dearly, right? I said, yes, Father, I did. You know, I'm having my conversation with, with God. And uh, he said... Did you ever speak about me to him? Did you ever let him know about me? I said, no, I didn't, Father. I was struck right there. You know, so right then and there, God taught me lesson number one, my purpose in life, to share his love, his compassion with everybody, let everybody know about him and how good he is. That was one of the centerpieces that I was missing in my life, to share with another human being, encourage them, giving them hope, which in turn gives me hope. The second lesson was from my older brother that passed away in August 2013. I said, all right, God talked to me. He said, uh, haven't you been mad at this man long enough? Haven't you carried this weight on your shoulders long enough? Aren't you tired of carrying this? Give it to me. Put it at my feet and forgive this man. So I had to forgive him for the things that he did to me as a child. And uh, that was one of the hardest things I had to do. But So he taught me lesson number two, forgiveness. Lesson number three was probably the biggest. My little brother that passed away hung himself. I couldn't understand why he would do that. I mean, it was, it was just beyond me. And uh, so I was sitting there having that conversation with God, and I said, I don't understand why Danny had to die, Father. You know, he's the only person on this planet I've ever had a real relationship with. And that little life bulb went off in my head. He said, that's it, relationship. Now you can have a relationship with me. So he taught me my purpose, Forgiveness 
and relationship. And through all this, it still obviously wasn't enough because when I got out of jail, I was trying to do the right thing, trying to keep going. In uh, September 18th, 2014, my daughter, my 14-year-old daughter put a gun to her head and pulled the trigger. She committed suicide as well. That's what led me to prison. I lost all, everything about me. I just completely went into, uh, I was a hermit. I didn't care. I just started doing more and more drugs and, and didn't even, you know, have no hope for life at all. So that's what, you know, that time of my life led me to prison. And, uh, but backing up again out of that song with my brothers, that song is called My Rocky Road to Christ. I'm going to, I hope you guys enjoy it. God, I want to give you my life. Open up the heavens, show me your light. I've been in darkness so long, I just want to come back home. God, I want to give you my life. Open up the heavens, show me your light. I've been in darkness so long, I just want to come back home. Father, I stand before your throne. I'm a sinner living my life wrong. At times I, I feel so alone. God, give me your mercy. Please help me be strong. Lord, I'm tired of fighting these demons. I can still hear my mother, she's screaming. Rest in peace, my two brothers, they lay sleeping. God, give me the strength, my kids need me. I'm down on my knees and I'm pleading. I'm at your cross begging, just receive me. This is my prayer to you, please believe me. God, I want to give you my life. Open up the heavens, show me your light. I've been in darkness so long, I just want to come back home. God, I want to give you my life. Open up the heavens, show me your light. I've been in darkness so long, I just want to come back home. <laughs> Thank you. Um, real quick, I got another one. I just wrote a poem just two days ago. Um, it's called, I Saw Jesus Today. You know, I've been on this walk for the last year. When I went to prison and got into the Exodus Project, the Exodus Academy, that's when I saw some real change in my life. They, they instilled a lot of hope and encouragement. They let us know that... We, we're not just a number anymore. We're not just that, that hopeless person that, that just exists to be existing. We have a purpose in life. And uh, that's what the Exodus Academy has done for several people. And to give back is just the most awesome thing I've ever been able to try to do in my life. And for God to give me this opportunity to turn my life around and share with people the tragedies that I've been through and turn my, my mess into a message... It's truly a blessing. So this next one I'm going to do, it's called, like I said, it's called uh, I Saw Jesus Today. It might be a little rough because I just wrote it two days ago. And this morning I decided to put the chorus to it with my mentor Jim back there. But uh, here we go. I saw Jesus today. I saw his glorious face. He touched me. With an amazing grace, a true masterpiece of faith. I saw Jesus today. I saw Jesus today in every act of kindness, in every heart that's been beaten, shattered, and broken, in every encouraging word that's been spoken. I saw Jesus today. I saw Jesus today. I saw Jesus today. I saw Jesus today. In every dark day, he's my light. In every battle, he's that strength for me to fight. He's that vision for every blind man's sight. I saw Jesus today. I saw Jesus today. I saw a poor man begging for change from strangers. I saw a grown man comfort another man's child that wasn't his own. I saw real unconditional love without rhyme or reason. I saw Jesus today. I saw Jesus today. 
I saw a man boast in his weakness. I saw him live a grateful life of joy and bliss through his meekness. I saw Jesus today. I saw chaos in color turn to peace in words spoken from one to another. I saw Jesus today. I saw Jesus today. I saw his glorious face. I saw Jesus today. Thank you.